Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay because today I'm gonna give you a tour of my first ever real estate investment property that I bought here in Vegas at the age of 33, which is not impressive at all, but it's my first one and I'm proud of it. Since I know the internet is gonna find out anyway, I'm gonna show you exactly where this house is. I'll give you the full tour and then I'll take you behind the scenes and show you all the financials in terms of how much I paid, my down payment, my monthly payment, my interest rate, and my plan to make money with it. So I'm excited. With that said, let's get right into it. This community is located at the base of the Foothills Mountain with a world-class private golf course called Dragon Ridge, where memberships start at $80,000. And since I can't afford that, we'll just skip right past that part. It's also a very famous wedding destination because the community also features five championship tennis courts, a 15,000 square foot fitness center, a restaurant, a gym, and a feng shui energy vortex, which is supposed to create a powerful magnetic flow that affects wealth and is supposed to have healing powers. In other words, a marketing gimmick that rich people probably fell for. But really my favorite part about the whole community is giving my friends a tour of the place because at night, it has arguably one of, if not the coolest, views of the entire Las Vegas Strip. Now the HOA for this place is $330 a month, which is pretty reasonable when you think about how much stuff you're getting for that money. And it reminds me of Jurassic Park every time I go in there because it's so lusciously green, which is why people love coming there because it's been in development since the 1980s. With that said, let me show you the actual house itself right now. So this is the house itself. It's a single story and this is the side of the house with this lush landscaping. This is the courtyard in front of the entrance of the house which I'll probably never use. So let's go inside. And welcome, welcome, come on inside. This is the house. This is the entryway right here. It's sort of like an oval shaped entryway which is kind of interesting. And this is a three bedroom, three and a half bathroom, 3,300 square foot single story house. I love the fact that it's a single story. I didn't know how much I would fall in love with single stories until I bought this house. And I know for the rental market, it appeals to a much broader array of people. So hopefully we can get it rented out really soon. But let me show you the house itself, starting with the kitchen. Now, this part right here is one of my favorite parts. This is something I have at my house as well, which is a two, two and a half inch upgrade to the countertops. And I believe the material right here is Calcutta Quartz which has this beautiful gray vein work, which I think looks awesome. And then here it's accented by this really cool textured brick wall, which gives it a lot of character. And it also has these beautiful light fixtures, which are kind of old school nautical style lights. Now, as you come on right through, you'll see this is the closet, nothing crazy there, but this is kind of crazy because this is what's called a built-in fridge which I didn't really know about until recently. And you can tell it's a built-in fridge because it is flush with the cabinets. And it's very expensive to do this, but luckily it also came with the house. And here we have two ovens, which is nice because I've never really used the oven, but it comes with two and that's kind of cool. Here we have microwave, pretty standard. But this right here is also one of my favorite features, which is the actual center island, which is nice because you could be cooking and watching TV on the living room side. Here it also has a wine fridge slash wine cooler. And here in this room, we have the washer dryer. So we have the laundry room and then the garage is back there. Now this house also has three entrances in this room to go to the backyard, which I'll show you in just a second, but directly behind you is the door to go to the backyard. But as we go around here, again, we have the dishwasher, sink, pretty standard, but I think this is one of the coolest features too. This is, I think, a feature of an older style house that was built in 2000, which is this sort of lazy Susan circular style cabinet, which you can put your pots and pans, which I don't think they really do anymore. Now over here, this is another really interesting feature, I think is part of an older house, which of course is this, uh, stove top, but what's interesting about it is it has this really cool feature. When you press this button, it comes up and that's the thing that absorbs and sucks in the air when you're cooking. So I thought that was kind of cool and interesting and not something I've seen around a lot. Now, as we walk through the kitchen, this is the open style living room. And I love this open space. It's got these cool recessed ceilings, which you can upgrade and put contrasting textures and make it look really, really special. And one of my favorite parts is the ceilings are like 12 feet tall, which is really cool in a single story home. 
Now here we find ourselves in the dining room, which I guess you could put sort of a semi-circular sofa with a coffee table and just hang out with all your friends and have fun. But as we walk through here, this is where you'd have your sofa and the TV right here. Now, this is sort of an older style house. So if I was living here, I would remove all the bookshelf spacing and get rid of this fireplace. I would shiplap it in white like I do in my house. And then I'd put a really cool modern style fireplace that's maybe eight to 10 feet long and then put a really big screen TV or maybe even a projector. But you actually don't have to put a projector there because as we walk through here, this is either the game room, you can convert it into an office space. And the people who sold me this house actually had it as a theater room. So they had a sofa right here and they had a projector screen right there. So it was a really nice little area. And I have to say my favorite part about this is the light fixture. I love this chandelier. Now, this whole house also has these beautiful plantation style shutters, which is a little bit more old school, but it adds to the character of this house. Now, as we walk through the house, here we have the closet, here we have the guest bathroom, and when we get to this part of the house, it's sort of divided into two different sections. We have the primary bedroom on this side, and to my left, we have the two guest bedrooms. So let me show you the two guest bedrooms first. As we walk here, this is the first guest bedroom. Now, it's nothing crazy. It's pretty standard guest bedroom. Nothing all that special. But as we walk through here, we have a giant bathroom, which I think is kind of interesting. You have this double vanity, giant mirror, and here we have a pretty large tub and shower, which this whole area is almost as big as the guest bedroom itself. So the other bedroom is kind of a similar layout. So let me show you the second one. The second guest bedroom is through here. And here we have this office space area, which is again, I think older style. So if I was living here, I'd probably upgrade it, maybe get rid of this altogether. Or you could put up walls and maybe put up shelving space or even a closet or something else. But as of right now, it sort of doubles as an office. You could put your computer here, your chair, and that's this space. But as you walk through this little office, you get the second guest bedroom. Here we have the closet. And again, pretty standard style guest bedroom with the bathroom over there. So now let's go take a look at the primary bedroom. So follow me. Now the primary bedroom is right here through this really massive hallway, which adds to the dramatic sort of vibe of the, the primary bedroom. And as you walk in, you get this giant wide open area. So this is your primary guest, primary guest bedroom. <laughs> I guess it could be if you wanna spoil your guests, but this is the primary bedroom. You could put the bed here, you put your TV and all your consoles there on this side. And this bedroom also has its own separate exit. So you can go to the backyard as well. Now, as we walk through this archway, we get the primary bathroom, which is also divided in sort of two sections and it's sort of centered around this freestanding tub, which is really cool. So we have his side on this side and her side on the opposite side. So let's start with the his side because this is a little bit of a smaller closet. That's how you can tell it's his closet. And here is also one of my favorite parts. And you can tell they really spent a lot of money upgrading this bathroom because through here, we have this sort of white marble quartz, not really Calcutta, but really cool tile and we have two shower heads, which is nice. If you want to take a shower with someone, of course, why wouldn't you? Now on this side, we have her side. And here we have the powder room, I guess, as I would call it, if I was a real estate agent. Here you can get ready, you could look really pretty. Here we have the shared bathroom, and we also have a little doggy door, which is really cool. And behind me is, of course, her closet, which is massive. Just for context, I could stand here, you can see, how small I probably look. It's a really, really big closet. Now, let's go outside through the house and then I'll show you exactly where the backyard is and what it looks like, so follow me. All right, so once again, this house has like four exit ways to the backyard. There's one door right there, there's one there, and the third one's on the opposite side, and then there's a fourth one in the primary bedroom. So let's go outside and I'll show you the backyard because it's my favorite feature of the entire house.
So here's the backyard. I love how big and green and open it is with this awesome side yard for the dog to play, a little hangout spot with a built-in barbecue, a built-in fridge, and of course the star of the show, which is the pool itself with this water feature, all powered by solar power, which came with the house. All right, so if you've made it this far, here are the financial details, but just a warning, there's gonna be a lot of numbers thrown at you. So I bought this house for $1,330,000 with a seven to one adjustable rate mortgage and a 20% down payment. I figured that at the beginning of this year, interest rates would probably skyrocket for the rest of the year and inflation would stay high. So I wanted to take out a loan on as much money as possible that I could reasonably afford so I can protect myself against inflation and make money on the loan, which is exactly what I've done. So here it is. I'm paying $4,620 a month. Roughly 600 of that goes towards property taxes and I'll actually pay closer to $886 a month in property taxes and another $330 a month in HOA fees, bringing the total out-of-pocket monthly cost to $5,232. But here's the most interesting part. I learned that in real estate, you make a lot of your money back when you buy a house, not necessarily when you sell a house, which is counterintuitive. So here are some of my savings. The first thing is property taxes. Because I'm in the highest tax bracket of 37% means that it translates to a monthly savings of $327. That's property taxes. The second one is mortgage interest. Now that translates to about $609 a month. The third one is depreciation. So let's say next year I rent it out for the full year. I can actually depreciate it over the course of 27 and a half years. But the value that I use to depreciate it on is not the purchase price of 1.33 million. It's going to be only on the building itself and not the land. So based on my personal situation, that translates to another $930 a month. So all of that income is income that I can add up and use to offset against my rental income. So here's how it all ties together and here's how it works. Because of where this house is located, its market rental rate sits anywhere between seven and seven and a half thousand dollars a month. Now, if we take all those tax deductions I just talked about, which total up to be $1,866, I can subtract that amount from my monthly rental income to offset my taxes. But that's not all, because I can also count the principal pay down because that's like putting money away into a savings account. That's me paying for the asset, which adds to the equity that I've built in my own asset. So again, it's like a forced savings account that I can't withdraw, but it still increases my net worth at the end of the day. Not only will it get to make money when I rent it out, but it will also mean that I save a lot more in taxes because I can use all those deductions to offset the income. And because my interest rate on the loan was really low, I've already made money on the loan thanks to the difference between that 2.5% rate and the rate of inflation of eight plus percent. So that means I'm officially Jim Carrey from The Mask. Got 17.5% in T-bills amortized over the fiscal year. Now all these numbers is not the only reason why I bought this house. The other part of the reason is because my parents are getting older and right now they live in a two-story house and someday I'd like to be able to give them this house when they retire so they can live in a single story in a really nice neighborhood. But for now, I'm gonna rent it out and see what my experience is like. And if that's interesting, I'll make another video about it in the future. But I would say the biggest takeaway from this entire video is that it's really important to understand the difference between good investing and between making videos for YouTube. Because yes, even though I believe in the digitization of assets in the future and things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and the metaverse and NFTs, all of that represents roughly 10% of my net worth. But most of my money is invested into things like stocks, real estate, and held in cash. And I think that's important to understand the difference because I think that people vote with their wallet and not necessarily with their videos on YouTube and their titles and thumbnails. Hopefully that made sense. And as always, don't forget to have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Go grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin right here. Don't forget to move it offline onto a cold storage wallet so you don't lose the money, but also go grab the money while it's still there. Also grab your free stocks, links are down below and then go track them in my spreadsheet, link down below in my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes Wednesday. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.